Hi, you are on listening to Scribble Talk, a podcast for bid and proposal professionals. My name is Basko Sudrub and with my co-host, Sri Case, we will be sitting down with our industry veterans to share their stories, discuss their career and learn how to make an impact in the industry. Today's guest is Haley Cox. Haley was born and raised in Huntsville, Alabama, and is the third generation in a family to work in the defense industry. Wow. She's currently a capture and proposal senior analyst at Arrowhead Rocket Giant AR, where she provides leadership, proposal leadership training, and hands on process support in the development of competitive new business proposals for AR's defense business unit. She provides both virtual and cross-site proposal guidance to proposal managers and teams on critical national defense programs resulting in strategic wins for the company. In just over two years at AR, Kelly has received four Mission Success Awards for superior proposal leadership and support. Ooh, Kelly, good. (laughs) (laughs) Kelly was selected by the AR leadership team to serve on three special Project stroke teams, the ethics liaison for the ethics compliance department, team lead of the strategy and business development employee engagement team, and the AR business operating Airboss Huntsville Headquarters Leadership Council. I hope you sleep. Haley, it's hands-on role. (laughs) Haley earned the Bachelor of Arts in Political Science and Philosophy and a BA in Russian Language and Literature from the University of Alabama in Huntsville. She's certified at the foundation level of the APMP and is also the membership director for the APMP California or the Western chapter. Welcome, Haley, to Scribble Talk. Great to have you with us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Hey, let's start from the very beginning. Where were you born? And let's talk about your high school and education. Okay. Uh, I was born and, and raised in Huntsville, Alabama, um, mm-hmm. where I still live. So I went to school at Grissom, uh, high school at Grissom, uh, named after Gus Grissom, the famous astronaut, and um, graduated from Grissom in 2007, mm-hmm. uh, played volleyball in high school, um, then I went to University of Alabama in Huntsville and did two degrees there, like you just mentioned, and um, wrapped up my whole college education experience in 2015. Got it. Talk us about Huntsville, Alabama. You know what I mean? Like living there, studying there, working there. Uh, what's to- give us a quick intro about Huntsville. Uh, well, Huntsville, it's, it's home to me. Um, oftentimes, I, when I meet someone else from Huntsville, that's Huntsville native, I hear, uh, you know, you don't meet uh, many people who are from here originally, but I guess that's not the case for me. Um, I've been here, like I said, my whole life, and um, it's grown a whole lot in the past 10 years or so. You know, we uh, we have the second largest research park in the country, um, which is also the fourth largest research park in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, Cummings Research Park. So yeah, fun fact. Um, uh, also home to uh, NASA, Marshall Space Flight Center. Uh, that's something we've got the big, um, I think it's Atlas V rocket that you'll see if you're ever in Huntsville driving up 565. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so, you know, it's. I've always had my routine here. Go to school, go to class come home, do homework, go to the gym. So it's kind of, um, that's just how I know Huntsville, you know, but like I said, it's grown up a lot recently. There's a lot to do downtown. Um, so it's becoming more of a, a place that people like to visit, I think, than it used to be. Got it. Do you, do you, in the childhood, do you stand there and wave at the rockets that goes from the NASA thing as a child? Because, you know, it, in my world, even even um, even even you know, like aeroplanes and stuff. When you see there as a child, you just stay and you wave at the aeroplanes. In in your case, you see the. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Um, that's funny. You know, I don't know that. I don't think that they launch uh, have any launches out of Huntsville. I was down in Cocoa Beach several years ago when there was a launch and. Um, I, I'm I'm pretty sure they don't do anything like that out of Huntsville, uh, with rockets at least. 
but we do have a lot of, um, you'll see Chinooks flying over, um, cause Redstone Arsenal is here too. It's home to Army Aviation and Missile Command, in addition to lots of other um, cool uh, military and government agencies. So um, you do see some of that, but not, not rockets <laughs> flying around. <laughs> That's nice. That's nice. Again, you know, growing up, uh, doing your uh, um, schools and college there. And then uh, what was the very first job? Is it still in Huntsville? Yes. Yep. My first job out of college was at a small defense contractor here in Huntsville. And I was a um, program support to uh, several different task orders. And um, I was just supporting the program managers, helping with uh, travel that our employees working on the various task orders had to do, um, making sure all the seed drills were turned in and accurate. So yeah, that was my first job. That's great. I mean, like, is Huntsville full of defense companies? I mean, like, uh, uh, in addition to NASA, is, is, the, is it famous for defense contractors as well? Yes. Um, okay. we've got a huge, huge, uh, military, particularly army, um, because of, uh, Redstone Arsenal, it's an army base. And, um, so there's huge military, uh, presence and lots going on here in that regard. And then, like I said, with, uh, Research Park, we've got all of the big, uh, defense and aerospace contractors that you'll have out in, um, the headquarters are typically out in California, but um, yeah, lots of, lots of uh, defense and aerospace companies out here and um, as well as some, some commercial, but I couldn't tell you too much <laughs> about what's going on in that, um, mm. in that realm. I just don't keep up with it that much. That's brilliant. I mean, like three generations of family working for different sector. Talk us through about that. That's amazing. Yeah. So um, it just kind of came naturally to me. Um, my granny was with the Army Missile Command, mm. and both my parents were um, career civil servants. Uh, my dad did um, tour in the Marine Corps before he joined the civil service. And uh, yeah, so it just it's uh, just been natural to me. And I, I was always intrigued by, you know, hearing their stories, the people that they got to work with and the, um, the systems that they got to work with. So here I am. Nice. That's nice. So, uh, I mean, like, talk us your role at AR and yeah, any memorable projects that you have done in AR or, or any projects that you consider memorable in your proposal career so far. So my, my role at AR is um, I'm in the proposal center and we work with uh, uh, the various centers of excellence, you know, engineering, program management, supply chain to, you know, provide consultation on the proposal process, uh, how to put together a compliant, um, compelling proposal. And um, so they come and let my boss know whenever they have a an RFP imminent. Um, hopefully, they they let us know in advance, and um, then we we just get started with the you know it's more or less the Shipley uh, proposal process, uh, an abbreviated version of course. So just help them through that process, and um, you know I do some other uh, kind of things on the periphery, and um, as far as memorable. <laughs> a memorable proposal effort. That's a tough one. There's there's one I'm working right now. I think will be pretty memorable. Mm. Um, it's just one of those that um, we've gotten extensions and uh, also uh, the big reason that I think it, it'll stick with me is it's an incredible team. Um, I just had a lot of opportunities to learn from some really brilliant people who um, fortunately they they take the time to answer all my questions that have nothing to do with proposal. You know, I want to know about their, their line of work and um, how they got there. So just a great group of group of folks. And um, 
it's been dragging on now for a while. So uh, <laughs> we've spent a lot of time together. But, um, you know, there's, uh, we all have these proposals like this. They're pretty stressful at times. But when you're working with a really good group, um, it kind of uh, cancels out the, <laughs> the stress in a way. Totally, totally. I think, you know, it's great. you have an amazing team and, you know, projects in defense tend to be intense and, um, you know, what it's, it looks like, you know, everything is right there for you. So proposal like career itself is hard, as you know, it's a very tough environment, but for you to be nominated to take up not just one project, but three projects, Haley, talk us through what are those three projects and why do you think the AR leadership chose you for those projects and stuff? Because it's important um, because many of the proposal professionals are undervalued, as you know, they think they're undervalued because they are undervalued in certain expense and mm -hmm. they are underpaid. You know, people like you who not only are good in what you are doing, but also who are also progressing to take wider roles um, are, are a kind of a hope to the wider community. So please do share yeah. the three roles. Yeah, sure. And please, thank you. Sure. So I have to say probably the most, it's the most rewarding for me. Uh, and part of that has to do with it's a lot more the team has put into it uh, is the um, employee engagement action plan team. And that came about by uh, my boss telling me that his boss's boss said that I was going to be on the team and um, started in, I want to say February, 2019. There's a company-wide effort. And I think this was, I know that this was going on at a lot of um, different defense aerospace companies. So maybe a, an industry-wide effort is a better uh, way to, to put that. But um, to get, feedback from employees and figure out how to improve uh, the culture and what were the top priorities to, um, to the employees. So I started on the team um, because m my boss told me to, and um, it's turned out to be an incredible experience. About in April, I think, our former team lead, who was incredible, she's She's probably about my age, and she's in California. I wish I'd had, to, had a chance to um, work with her more closely in Huntsville, but uh, she, she's incredible and learned a whole lot from her, and she took on a new role. And when she did, she asked me if I um, would backfill her spot on that team as a team lead. And... Um, you know, we've got this group of six of us and it's, I mean, I am the, the team lead it's technically, but it's like any team, uh, nothing would get done without everyone. You know, we all have our, our unique role that um, things wouldn't get done without, without it. And it's been a really good opportunity to work across um, different functions within strategy and BD, as well as um, I've had some exposure to uh, different uh, our, um, strategy and BD leaders that I probably wouldn't have otherwise, at least not at this point in my career. So, you know, I just went in there and didn't have a clue what I was doing when I joined the team, but uh, worked hard and it paid off and I've learned a lot. And um, we've done a lot of things with COE, our uh, strategy and BD teammates seem to be happy with our action plan and the work we've done. So it's been really uh, rewarding too. Totally, Elisa, how did you plan your time? You have, you have proposals, you have uh, a lot of things that you still have to manage part of your day job in addition to that you are taking these additional roles. How did you plan your time? How did you balance your kind of uh, the next step in your career or the additional projects versus this? You know, it kind of depends um, on my proposal workload. You know, that's always number one. And um, if I've got something going hot and heavy with one of these uh, extra projects that I've taken on. Sometimes that means that 
I am putting in extra hours and um, I'm pretty focused. So when I sit down and get something done, I um, focus on it and, and get it done. And um, when it does get really, my schedule gets really crammed. I, uh, I try to, you know, set it, you know, from nine to 11, I'm going to get this proposal work done. Then, you know, from 11 to 12, maybe have a meeting, you know, so I try to do the best that I can to kind of block off my calendar and it doesn't, when you're, you get phone calls and things comes up, come up, it doesn't always work according to plan, but you just kind of have to roll with it. And sometimes you, you're putting in extra hours, but um, I think that if you're doing something that you enjoy and that you find rewarding, then it, uh, you probably won't mind putting in some extra work sometimes. No, it shouldn't be happening a whole lot, you know, but. <laughs> so to, so to, I don't know whether it's Spider-Man or Superman. I think it says uh, <laughs> with more power comes more responsibility or something, right? <laughs> yep. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Spider-Man, I think. Yep. <laughs> yep. Keep, keep going, keep going, Haley. We all want you to, to do more and more and more bigger and better things. And uh, I think it's nicely AR uh, for all your efforts also gave you four mission success awards. Talk us through what those awards are and um, what how much does it mean to you? So the uh, Mission Success Awards are, it's a company-wide program and uh, anyone can put, put you in for an award. And the, those, of course, were for uh, proposal support and leadership. And um, they mean a, a lot to me. <laughs> and I think more so would be the, the award citations. And the, it's not so much the recognition, hey, I got an award, you know, that's nice to put on, on a resume or, or whatnot, but just um, knowing that these people, I mean, I work with some really top-notch people that have been in, in the defense industry for more than one career. You know, they're on their second career in the defense industry. They retired and they're back at it and brilliant people. So um, to know that folks like that, uh, value what I'm doing and what my team is doing that I think is more um, that that's a real uh, award to me. Totally, Haley. Well done. At what point in your career did you come across APMP? I came across APMP, well, I'd known about it, but I didn't join until I started working at AR, um, which was about three and a half years ago. So, which, and that was probably two and a half years into my, my whole career. Wow. So three and a half years ago, you came into APMP and you already won the APMP 40 and the 40 this last year. Mm -hmm. That's good, Haley. So uh, talk us through about your 40 and the 40 award and also your uh, local chapter, which is the California or the Western chapter contributions and your team and related. any APMP stuff that you want to talk about? Sure, sure. Um, so the 40 under 40 award was uh, a very nice surprise. Um, there are a lot of people out there who I'm sure are deserving. So I was very flattered and um, grateful that uh, someone thought to nominate me and not to mention um, that I was selected <laughs> for the award. So um, I'm, I'm definitely proud of that. So I'm thinking, I'm looking at the questions right now. The um, most memorable APMP experience I think the Western Chapter Training Day is so much fun. And um, our former California chapter, we had our first Western Chapter Training Day in October. And it's, it's really similar to VidCon, but um, much smaller group. And just one day at the Disneyland Resort. And um, so, you know, you're, I'm, I'm an introvert. And uh, 
I don't love big crowds. So while I enjoy big con, um, it, there are a lot of people there. <laughs> and um, so the Western Chapter Training Day is, it's kind of a more, um, you know, intimate setting and you have more chance, uh, more chances to, you know, talk to folks one-on-one. And for me, it, it's an easier setting for me to chat with people and get to know more, more people than uh, big con. And I am the membership director for Western chapter. And I, this is my second year doing that. It's a two year term. So it's been um, really great to uh, work with the other chapter leaders. And uh, I wish <laughs> I, I really like everyone in the chapter, especially everyone on the board. I wish that um, I wasn't all the way across the country. Um, it'd be nice to, you know, be able to participate in, in-person events and things like that. But um, yeah, it's been APMP overall has been an incredible uh, experience for me. I've learned a lot, had the chance to network and met people who have helped me in my career. And mm -hmm. um, so I definitely recommend it. Anyone who's not an APMP member that's thinking about it, uh, go for it. That's nice, Ali. That's nice, and uh, you know what? I, as you always say, you you are you know you are that kind of a person that we always look for, <laughs> which is like yeah. you know, not just do a job and then say, hey, you know what? Um, just be fulfilled, which is which is great. There's nothing wrong with it. But then go and do more for the company. Go and do more for the community. Then go and do more for uh, the profession. You know that that's the, that's you know you're a typical epitome of uh, who we want to showcase in the podcast. So well done and thank you. So before I hand over you safely to Ashley, tell us three things not many people know about you. <laughs> so this this was a kind of a tough one because um, I I feel like I'm one of those people. If you know me, you know me. Um, so I got to thinking about uh, some travel experiences that I've had that have been the most recent one was um, about six years ago now. So um, these are probably some things a lot of people who have gotten to know me more recently don't know. So the first one is um, that I visited Hawaii with my family in high school and we took a helicopter ride over an active volcano, which is really cool. Um, a helicopter ride would have been cool on, on its own without flying over an active volcano. Um, the next one is I uh, did an internship in Russia when I was completing my Russian language and literature degree. And I um, was in a smaller town, um, kind of a, a bit, um, in southern Russia, and um, got to visit some uh, Russian villages. It was an absolutely incredible experience um, seeing such a different culture and um, something I'll, I'll never forget. And then my last one is I uh, went to Norway in Sweden with some of my family. And we went to a little town in Norway where my granny's um, ancestors were from and met some, <laughs> actually met some relatives in that little town. A lady at the um, inn where we were staying was best friends with um, one of the relatives. So uh, we didn't know that, but it just kind of came about in conversation. And then also while I was in the, um, at Oya, Norway is the name of the town. When we were there, we took um, a boat ride across a fjord and went to see there's a little island with a church. Um, and, you know, a lot of those older churches have the cemeteries attached to them and um, saw the graves of, I think it was my great, 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 great grandparents in Norway. Wow. So I think those are, yeah, I think not many people know those things about me. Nice, yeah, super. It's mm -hmm. nice, it's a nice, interesting information. Thank you for sharing. Uh, I'm sure Ashley will call that even more on this. So thank you, Haley. Thank you. Wow, 
Wow, Haley, such exciting things. Um, it's been super mm -hmm. exciting to hear about your career so far and all the things that you're doing. We want to dig a little bit into, you know, what do you do in your free time, um, if you have any, mm -hmm. right? It sounds like you do find some things mm -hmm. to do. So can you tell us a little bit about your hobbies and interests? Yeah, um, I have always been really active. So um, exercise is a part of my day pretty much every day, unless I'm just, you know, not feeling well or I'm the rare occasion I get so exhausted that I don't even feel up to doing a uh, little Pilates or going for a nice walk or something like that. And um, it's huge, especially if you're in a, a high stress, um, in the middle of a high stress proposal or something like that, you know, it's, um, I think it's really important to get that, um, get that exercise in and, so that's always been a top thing for me. Um, more recently, I've, I've gotten into um, trying to learn some more cooking uh, recently. Yeah. <laughs> and I, um, yeah, I don't have a whole lot of, you know, I, like as far as daily things that I do. Um, one of my biggest hobbies that I, I don't do a whole lot, but it, it is um, refinishing old furniture. I love it. It's kind of like a, a cathartic thing for me and you know there's only so much furniture I can fit in the house and um <laughs> or try to <laughs> collect and give away to people after I refinish it but um that's something I love doing as well um and I also uh volunteer for our monthly kitchen ministry at my church um yeah so those are a couple couple of my interests Oh, very cool. So do you have a favorite piece of furniture that you've refinished and you're super proud of? I do. Um, I think my favorite is, um, it's a jewelry armoire and um, it's probably the boldest piece that I've done. And I was a little bit hesitant. I got it at a, an estate sale and um, Annie Sloan, I, I love Annie Sloan's um, paint stuff. So she just come out with this hot pink color. And mm -hmm. I thought that's too much. You know, I don't know if I'm going to love it, but it's, <laughs> it's my favorite. I think <laughs> I did it hot pink with black wax. So it's got like some black in the grooves that looks pretty oh, cool. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds really cool. <laughs> awesome. Um, and then in terms of, you know, fitness and working out, is it just, you know, kind of walking in Pilates or do you, I think I have a note here about maybe some martial arts? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, no, it's not just walking in Pilates. I, um, my dad, uh, got my sister and me in, into martial arts when I was in fourth grade. And so it's kind of been, and I, you know, I don't have a black belt in anything, uh, or anything like that, but um, it's always been something, it's so good for you to, um, you know, just know some basic self-defense and it's an awesome workout and yeah. awesome for blowing off steam. Um, mm -hmm. So <laughs> now, and I did throughout, you know, my, uh, as I was growing up, did some different martial arts and but my dad taught me a whole lot too. But now, um, if I'm doing any martial arts type stuff, I'm working out on my Bob. It's one uh, body opponent bag, I think is what it stands for. One of the oh. looks like a man, you know, that's uh, mm -hmm. mounted onto a, um, a base. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, cool. Very, very neat yeah. stuff there. <laughs> and then uh, maybe muscle cars. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So um, I drive a challenger. And, um, and it's another thing I picked up from my dad. He's always yeah. uh, um, loved uh, American muscle cars. So, you know, I just grew up every Mustang, Challenger, whatever it was on the road mm -hmm. that had any kind of historical significance, we were hearing about it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I've always, always thought they were cool. And um, now I have one. So that's another thing I love. Uh, this probably sounds weird to a lot of people, but one of my other favorite things to do is wash and um, wax my car. <laughs> it's oh just one. Of the, it's so one of those things, you know. You um, put in a, a lot of effort to do it, but when you're done, it's 
so rewarding to see how sh nice and shiny it looks. So. Wow, very cool. So is it like <laughs> a newer muscle car, an older one? It, mine's newer, it's a 2019. All right, so I we're gonna- I have an older one, but yeah. Yeah, a lot of work though, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so we're going to kind of dig into our random rapid fire questions round. Don't think too hard about the answers. And if you get stuck, we can move on. No worries. Okay. So what was the best year of your life and why? That's hard. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, they're, they're, I've been really blessed with um, a lot. And there have been some years that a lot of good things happened. But also, um, and that's if we're just talking a calendar year. Um, some, you know, maybe I lost one of my dogs or something like that. So mm -hmm. it's hard for me to say that any given year is the best, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. I don't know. Maybe I don't know that I can Pinpoint, answer that without yeah. thinking about it real hard. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Um, what is one kind or thoughtful thing someone has done to you lately? I think, um, I'm thinking of a lot of different things. Okay. So here's the uh, first thing that came to my mind. I, um, I'm adopting a new dog this weekend, and Aww. it's been a while. Um, lost both mine the past year and a half, so it's taken me a while to get get ready to mm. um, get another dog. And uh, the whole process has been shockingly um, rewarding. And obviously, I I love animals, and um, rescuing animals is always a reward in my mind, but. Just seeing the people, all the all the people out there, who are dedicating all of their free time in some cases their their lives and their um, you know they put everything they have into starting animal rescues. So mm -hmm. um, that uh, has been really rewarding for me to see um, how many people are out the, out there helping animals. You know because. I, and maybe I just kind of hone in on, on the, um, I wish I could save them all, you know, so it's all the sad stories kind of stick out to me, but, um, so I've been corresponding a little bit with the, um, foster dad of, um, the dog I'm adopting and, um, he randomly sent me yesterday the cutest picture of her. So, um, I don't know. I, I thought that was really, that was thoughtful of him. It was just out of the blue and, um, yeah, so. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> super, super sweet. And I bet you're so excited to adopt that sweet dog. I am. <laughs> I am very excited. So do you ever talk to yourself and when do you do it and what do you say? <laughs> um, yeah, I think that I do actually. <laughs> I, can't, <laughs> um, I can't believe I'm admitting that on a recorded podcast, but um, so I just, uh, something I kind of realized recently and I think it's and I couldn't recall you know any specific thing I've, I've said to myself but I think it's when I'm thinking about something real hard and I'll be maybe I'm cooking or cleaning or something like that and I just get um so deep in thought that maybe it just whatever I'm thinking maybe it's a potential uh conversation that I'm anticipating or something like that it just comes out of my mouth um, what, what I might say, you know, so yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. we can all relate to that. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. So what has been your biggest kitchen fail? Say that again? Kitchen fail. You said you've started cooking and I know I've had some, as I've tried out new recipes or something like that, maybe forgotten a key ingredient or forgotten about something in the oven. Oh, fail. Yeah. Fail. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, I think Oh, I made some cinnamon rolls from scratch the other day, uh, a week or so ago. And um, I think I I'm really prefer baking to cooking. And um, I'm, I'm decent enough at baking. I've never really flopped on anything until I made these cinnamon rolls recently. And um, I was so bummed. I'd been looking forward to making them for a while. I think I messed the dough up. I didn't... Um, get it in the right temperature to rise. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's probably the biggest fail. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, that's that's the worst with something just doesn't rise properly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Oh, goodness. So have you ever sent a text message to the wrong person? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Any mm -hmm. fun stories to share yep. behind that or just kind of kind of yes? <laughs> just um, it was a long time ago and uh, I was hanging out with some friends and um, yeah, so just leave it at yes. It was, it was <laughs> okay. it's nothing bad, you know, but <laughs> mm -hmm. just oh, better goodness. not get into it all. Um, do you have any nicknames? No, I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> so what is your favorite fitness workout? We know you have um, a bunch of different things that you like to do, but maybe a go-to or, or your favorite. I think my favorite is to do a combination of lifting weights and um, maybe a little Pilates, like some Pilates um, core on the side or something. So you get a little bit of the, you know, for me, um, the weightlifting really gets your, uh, it's a good outlet for any stress and um, something I've always enjoyed doing. And um, then the Pilates is kind of is a little bit more zen. So it's a good way to kind of wind down, I think, from a, a more intense workout. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds like a great combo there. Mm -hmm. If you could make a rule for a day and everyone had to follow it, what would it be? I think that it would be uh, to just be kind, you know, mm -hmm. um, too many people out there and we never know what other people are going through. So sometimes folks just have a bad day and that's totally understandable, but there are some people out there just not nice and um, seems like some of them may be, go out of their way to just be unkind to people. And um, so I think that would be my rule. It'd be nice to see how, how that would uh, change things. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so in a scenario where you're about to get into a fight or maybe you know hit on that um, body bag, what song comes <laughs> into your head as the soundtrack? I think Led Zeppelin, Immigrant Song. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's what just um, came to mind. Yeah. What else is in your music playlist right now? I don't listen to a whole lot of music, but I can pull up. I usually only do, only do when I'm driving, but let's, I can pull up. Uh, I like um, the Eagles. Mm -hmm. um, the, the John Wick uh, movie theme song that's on, on my list. Um, Aria Speedwagon. Um, occasionally I will listen to uh some upbeat country. I don't like the slower mm -hmm. country music, but um, yeah, so more or less, well, I guess rock and roll is what you call it. And, um, yeah. Some country, yeah. Very cool. That's a good playlist there. So if animals mm -hmm. could speak, which animal would be the rudest and why do you think so? <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, <laughs> I don't know. That's a tough one. <laughs> Maybe... Um, I feel like some kind of birds might be kind of rude. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I couldn't tell you why, but um, yeah, I don't know. That's what, what I'm thinking. Uh, yeah. It couldn't possibly, possibly be dogs or cats. Um, so <laughs> I, yeah, maybe birds. Yeah, totally. If you were arrested with no explanation, what would your friends and family assume you had done? I think, well, they'd probably just assume I was wrongfully arrested and hadn't, hadn't done anything. <laughs> yeah, I, mi mi mistaken identity or something like that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Wow. Well, this has been super fun, um, Haley. Looking back on, you know, where you've gotten to now, who are the people who have been the most influential in your life and career? Uh, definitely um, my, my parents and my grandparents, my um, dad's parents, especially my granny, the one I mentioned uh, when we yeah. first started. Uh, mm -hmm. She was huge in my life. And um, I've, I've got some lifelong friends who, you know, the kind of friends that become family that have been 
extremely influential and um, in my career. Definitely, I've been really, really blessed with my um, people at, at work, especially my boss and his boss, who was um, has been my mentor through APMP for two years. So I, I've got uh, two mentors in both of them, and they both really put in the time to to help me grow and um, also, you know, figure out what what it is what direction I want to go. And, um, yeah, I think that a lot of influential people I'm, I've been really lucky. Yeah, absolutely. It's so, so helpful to have those, um, people in your personal life and as well in your professional life to kind of support you and, and help you along the way. It's amazing. Yeah. So (laughs) what is one personal trait you like the most about yourself? I think, uh, probably, I, um, not that I don't ever, you know, get down and have a bad day, but I'm always and always have been pretty good about just persevering through whatever's going on, um, or at least doing my best to focus on, you know, the good things and keep the best attitude that I can through any, any, uh, negative that's going on. Yeah, that's amazing. And what have you observed lately in these COVID times that's reminded you that people are kind? Probably uh, seeing uh, with my kitchen ministry at church, and I know that this happens a a lot around the world, but just seeing people helping others out and, you know, maybe that's bringing, dropping a meal off to someone who can't get out because, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe, um, don't want to get out of the house or maybe they can't cook for themselves anymore or if someone's um, not feeling well. So yeah. just seeing how people have come together in the midst of some, some bad things going on. Oh, for sure. Yeah. That's been so, so nice to see. Uh, mm-hmm. We're moving on to our final three questions. What is one common myth about our profession that you'd like to de- debunk? I know. I think that, um, I don't know that this is a profession-wide myth, but um, maybe thinking that uh, we just are more like editors, you know, once the proposal gets put together, um, the proposal people just do a a good comprehensive final edit um, or a format if um, you're a desktop publisher. uh, And a lot of people, yeah, that's a good point. A lot of folks don't um, understand really what we do. And um, so I think that that, oh, that's, that's a tough one. Um, it all comes down to people just not really understanding what we do and sometimes not understanding why we're, we're doing a certain step in the process, um, what value it adds. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Like I could go on and on about that. But, <laughs> oh, um, for sure. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it is common, um, I think, industry-wide mm-hmm. for um, proposal professionals not to be valued and there to be a lack of understanding of that value add. And it's not really, you know, administrative mm-hmm. or something like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was just going to say there are some people who, who really value um, our profession, but folks mm-hmm. that I work with. So, um mm-hmm. And I, I really appreciate those people, <laughs> you know, um, so anyway, go ahead. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, it's, it's, um, there are those people out there, right. Who really understand and they get it. And a lot of times those people are the ones who've got to participate or experience firsthand exactly, you know, the value. Right. Yeah, Exactly. So what advice would you like to give your fellow bid and proposal professionals who are listening today? I would say, especially for those newcomers to the industry or the profession, um, is the best thing that you can do is add value um, wherever you can. You know, mm-hmm. it's, you're not always going to be the person at the forefront um, and rarely will you be the person that gets uh, uh, the recognition. Mm-hmm. But when you're working hard and doing your best and just um, always trying to find 
those uh, ways to add value to any proposal effort or, or really to anything you're doing in life, um, it'll pay off. And, you know, you don't do it because uh, someone might give you something in return, but mm -hmm. I've found that that does happen a lot, you know, when you're, you're doing that and you're working hard um, to add value and um, people notice it and oftentimes they will do what they can to help you out and to help you grow. Yeah, that's, that's such, such great advice and so well said. Uh, so Haley, you've accomplished so much in such a short amount of time. We're curious, what's next for you? What are you looking forward to in the future? <laughs> um, you know, I um, professionally, honestly, uh, I don't know. Um, and I thought a lot about this question. I'm, I'm not sure what's next for me professionally. Um, I'm always looking forward to the next uh, big proposal, I think. Um, We've talked about this some, but mm -hmm. they can be very stressful. But at the same time, in a way, I kind of thrive on those, um, or I can thrive in those high stress uh, environments. And, and so that's always kind of exciting for me. Um, and other than that, if we're talking personally, um, what's next for me is getting my uh, new pup. And um, I've been reading a dog training book. It's been about 12 years since I've brought a new dog into the family. So um, oh, brushing up on my dog training skills and um, <laughs> uh, just making lots of puppy play dates. <laughs> and um, yeah, so that's, that's what's next in, in the immediate future for me. Oh, well, that's amazing. And, and so exciting. I know that little pup is going to bring, you know, so much to your life. Oh, for sure. Yep. Uh, so Haley, was there anything that we haven't discussed today that you're hoping to share on the podcast today? The only thing that um, I would add is a response to the, um, what's one thing you wish you had known when you began your career? And I think this is something that's really important. Um, mm -hmm. If there are any newcomers out there is uh, that people are going to have as much confidence in you that as you have in yourself so mm -hmm. and that's that's a skill um that I had to learn <laughs> um yeah. honestly the hard way at first and um it's something you have to work on but it's definitely worth um investing some time in and um it'll I think that it can sometimes be the difference if you're able to keep uh keep your confidence up and um, project that and other people see it. I think that sometimes that can be the difference in people who um, excel quicker in their careers and sometimes go farther in the long run. So um, I think that's definitely something worth mentioning. Oh, absolutely. That is definitely really great advice for youngsters as well as, you know, um, those who have maybe been in the career for a while, right? That confidence can really make the difference right. in, in, in your career. So thank you for sharing yeah, that. Absolutely. And thank you so much, Haley, for your time today. It's really been a privilege to have you with us here at Scribble Talk. We wish you all the good health and happiness. Please continue to inspire bid and, pro bid and proposal industry colleagues and everyone mm -hmm. else around you. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay sane. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed our talk. Thank you, Haley. And all the best to both of you as well. <laughs> Thank you, Haley. Sure thing. Take care. To our listeners, thank you so much for tuning in. Please visit batchyscribble.com forward slash podcast to listen to this episode and check out any of our other previously recorded episodes. If you've enjoyed today's interview, don't forget to subscribe, review, and share the Scribble Talk podcast. We hope you'll check out our next episode where we interview another industry expert and special guest. Until then, it's Ashley Kays. Pascal Sindrum. Signing off. <laughs>